Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, welcome to Super Agents Live. Thanks for tuning in. Today's episode is, uh, we cover, it's different, man. I re-listened to it again to do the editing. I had a lot of fun with this, with today's guest. Now, why I brought her on, I'll tell you now, and I actually mentioned in the other intro, but this girl, when she was starting out, she's only been in the industry for 10 years, and she's killing it, number one. Number two, it, um, she didn't know what to do, and you know what she did? she actually started working with new homes. Now, I was like, how did you do have like a new home sort of focus? And it was sort of like a new home uh, investor type deal. She would go find a lot that she liked, you know, a lot. She would take it to a builder and sell it. And then boom, 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 started working with them. And uh, that is a big part of her business. So um, she's young. She's energetic uh she's been on the 30 under 30 list and uh you know we we talk about you know how she did the building route we talk about how you know she's she's a mom she has two kids <clears throat> she has built this business and now she has two kids very very successful guess what she only works three days a week so i dig into that how do you do that three days a week monday tuesday thursday how in the world do you manage that? So we talk about hiring, how she built a team, um, you know, how she prioritizes her stuff every day, how she she finds talent. There's a lot of golden nuggets in this episode. So stick with me. Before we get there, uh, as usual, a little bit of the housekeeping here. If you don't know, and hopefully you do if you listen, the hashtag for this show is Unpack That Idea. It's a giant follow train, right? I'll follow you, and and I encourage, we have a very, very strong tribe on Twitter. So I we would all welcome you there. I would love to see you there. My Twitter handle is at Super Agents Live or the show is or mine or whatever. So uh use unpack that idea. Tag me and and let get jump on uh jump on the team here. Um what else are we talk we talk about why you should outsource your weaknesses. We talk about why you should build your database and mine it. We also talk about why it's so important to be innovative and to be different than everyone else. Um that's it. Hey enjoy it. Let's go. Today on the show, pretty excited. We're doing something different. Look, we bring people on here who who have specialties, right? Geographic farming, working their sphere, whatever it is, right? Radio commercials. We've never had a guest like today's. This guest has a heavy focus in new homes and subdivisions. So I'm excited to unpack how she does that. I want to welcome to the show, and I'm going to butcher her last name. It's Stephanie Gasparovic. How do I do, Stephanie? <laughs> That was pretty good. All right. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. We've heard worse. <laughs> how, 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 do, how do you say it? We say it, Gasparovic. Aha. Hey, yeah, Stephanie. Think, yeah. Thanks for taking the time out. I know, you're, it's, I, mean, I know your time is valuable, so I appreciate you coming on. Sure. So Glad let's to be here. Yeah, yeah. So look, um, I, told, I gave everybody just a little bit of overview of kind of what your focus is. But, you know, take a minute. You know, tell us a little bit about you, about Stephanie, and, uh, and, and then about your business. Okay. Um, well, I've been in the business for about 10 years. I got started in 2004 when I was 24. Um, so I was a baby, you were a I baby. guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, I previously, my degree is in elementary education. So I taught uh, second grade, seven year old, not much different than selling real estate, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but taught, you know, taught second grade for about two years and then decided probably wasn't cut out for dealing with 25, seven-year-olds and um, just decided to get my real estate license. My dad um, was a builder growing up, so I was definitely around the industry my whole life, Um, never really in the real estate sales side, but, um, you know, more so being, you know, seeing houses being built and, you know, working on the construction side with my dad. and so I don't know, just kind of on a whim, got my real estate license. And then my husband and I moved to um, Wilmington, North Carolina in 2004. And we both kind of just left our, our salary paid jobs and both started our own businesses. He's a real estate attorney. And so he 
started up a law practice while I started up my real estate um, sales side. And it just kind of went from there. So um, it's been great. I mean, I have been, like I said, doing it for, you know, about 10 years now. And I think back in 2007 or 2008, I was um, recognized by Realtor Magazine, 30 Under 30. And so things have just been, you know, it's just been awesome. It's been an awesome ride. That is awesome. 30 Under 30. Yeah. uh, uh, Look. I is you you taught second graders and it, and I had an interesting yeah. experience yesterday. So I have three kids. I have 11, 9 and a and a 5-year-old. And okay. my, and yesterday my 5-year-old didn't want to go to school. I made him go to school. Yeah. And he's like, but hey, come and see me at lunch. So I, so I actually had an interview. I, I killed it early and uh, I can literally walk to the school. So I walked to the school and I sat and had lunch with all these five year olds and it was pure comedy. It was I, I, yeah. like, I was like, this is a great time. I want to come back tomorrow. What, yeah, it's it's fun. <laughs> right, but what, what? How come you? You know, I mean, did, were, you, were you just too business minded for that kind of a thing? Was that just you, look, fun and yeah. games is not for you? I don't know. I love kids, and I think all along, um, probably why you know I'm an only child, so I've never been around you know the younger ones. And I think all along, I deep down just wanted to be a mom. I wanted to have my own. Um, right when I got married, I wanted to have kids right away. My husband was like, no, no, no. Um, so, you know, finally, um, we, we have two kids now and, um, and that, that feeds my, my young child right, <laughs> need, needs. I guess. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. No, I do love children and, um, but right now I'm focused on mine and I've always said, you know, later on and a couple of years when mine are still really young, I've got a 16 month old. So oh my gosh. So, you know, just we're still up in the middle of the night sometimes. So I'm like, oh, all right, yeah. just give me a couple of years and we go, I'd love to, you know, get back into like maybe volunteering and doing some more with our church with some of the other kids. But right now we're focused on ours, making Good. sure that they, right. they're doing well. <laughs> For sure. My wife does a lot of that too. So, okay. So you are this mom, you're 34 years old. You have two kids. Which I think it's, yeah. I, I think it's great that a lot of people are starting too late and I don't want to talk about, you know, about building a family on the show, but, but, um, so how do you do it? Right. So you are, you're very successful, you know, 30 under 30, you know, you were recognized four years ago. You have a 16. How do you manage that Stephanie? I know it's been kind of crazy. And it's funny the past, um, year or so, actually the past couple of months, I think we've kind of finally like got it. Um, and so the hardest thing has been balanced for us. Um, I am a very, when I'm home, I'm home. Um, My husband, on the other hand, has an awful time shutting it off, and so I'm always getting on him about it. So all the time we're learning, but I think for me, um, time management is actually one of my pros, which I think a lot of people struggle with. But I come in, and I've got a schedule. I get my one thing done first, and, you know, if anything else comes my way, you know, then it happens. But um, I just, I think I stay pretty focused. So right now I'm only actually working three days a week. Um, I work Monday, Tuesdays and Thursdays and I take off, um, Wednesdays more so for my, myself. I have my mom help with me with the kids on Wednesdays, um, about half a day. And so I'd get my stuff done that I need to personally on those days. And then Fridays, it's been Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Of course, I spend um, at home with the kids. Um, so I've, you know, it's not for everybody because when you do that, you have to take yourself out of the business. Um, and so you have to let go of a lot of control. And, you know, I've had to do that. And I'm okay with that because things have been running smoothly and I've hired the right people and we've got the right people in place. So it just flows um, now. So things are going great. <laughs> and not to mention we just were, we just about eight months ago launched this new Keller Williams in Wilmington, North Carolina. So we just switched companies about eight months ago, too. So life has been crazy, but we're, we're finally getting it together. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So, so you were deliberate. So you, you know, you said I'm, you were very deliberate. I, you know, I want to spend, I want to work three days a week. I want to spend time with yeah. my kids. I want to make sure. And so then you built your business to support that, right? So you hired a team and how does, how does, um, having this new home focus play into that? Because, you know, you, you parachuted into North Carolina and, and it sounded to me earlier, like you didn't have a network. You didn't know anybody. No, didn't know anybody, not brand new town, grew up in Maryland, lived there for, you know, 20 some years and definitely did not know a single soul coming to Wilmington. Um, so totally new market. And I don't know, you know, you look back and it's like, I can't believe I did what I did. Right, <laughs> it's so right, right. funny. So there's something deep down in there driving me. 
Um, but you look back and it's like, wow, I can't believe I did that. But it's worked and it's great. So um, how did you do it though? How, I mean, because you know, a lot of people struggle yeah. with that. Even if they live in the town mm-hmm. where they whatever, a lot of people feel like they don't have a network, right? So, so mm-hmm. you truly didn't. What were the mm-hmm. steps that you took to to you know get to get your name out there in the mm-hmm. community? Well, I think when I first got licensed, um, we were actually living, I lived in Greensboro, North Carolina for a year. So for six months, I was brand brand newly licensed in Greensboro. um, And we lived there for six months prior to moving to Wilmington. So in that six month period, I I joined a team and I got some experience just from their team leader. Just I went on um, listing appointments with their, buying appointments with their, um, wrote, you know, two offers with her. So I, I got just, my feet wet there. And then when we moved here, I of course wanted to do my own thing. Um, so when we moved here, I just, you know, I'm competitive, I, you know, of course played sports and, and for me, a driving force was being number one, you know, I wanted to kind of take over an area and what I, I am still known for, I think is, um, just, it's a little town off side of Wilmington on the North side of Wilmington called Hampstead. And we lived there for some years and I kind of made it my little niche. And, um, you know, just any time I would, I mean, I remember driving around and looking at if the house looked empty or grass was growing, I would look up tax records, I would call them and say, you know, are they looking to sell? I was really trying to um, also get involved in the new home side because I knew for me, I'm not, um, I'm not a very, um, oh, how do I put this? I'm not a very um, warm and fuzzy all the time. I'm kind of to the point and, you know, that's kind of what I grew up with. And so I knew if I, you know, work with builders, I'd only have to work with one person on, you know, several deals instead of working with 10 different people on 10 deals, you know, just working with one person on 10 deals maybe. So I knew if I could find some lots, um, there's builders ready to build and they have the money to build. And so if I could find the lots and bring them to the builders, then, you know, I would get the listings. Um, so I, I did that a lot. I started, um, mailings. I would go to the local builders in town and, um, and look up their addresses and basically send them, um, send them, you know, new lot listings that had come on the market, even if they weren't mine, which most of them were not mine, but send them, you know, new listings that came up and anything I overheard, I would just call them. I mean, I did crazy stuff. I, you know, I look back and I'm like, I can't believe I did that. Um, but I, I remember driving around on a beach community one time and called, I think it was like action construction. And I had no idea. I was new to the market. I had no idea who these people were. And he called back and he's like, honey, do you know I'm the owner of Century 21? And I was like, no, I had no idea. I'm sorry. You know, and he's like, well, if I list, I'm going to have to list with them. And he's like, but I appreciate the effort. You know, so, it, you know, that just being out of the box and making those phone calls, not being afraid to hear no, um, yeah. and just having that driving force of, you know, I mean, we had to. We had no other choice. We had to make money. So, um, you know, just making it day-to-day. This is my business. I get up every morning. This is what I do. And, you know, making it work. Yeah. So, so, I mean, your dad was this, you know, a builder and most builders are all gruff mm-hmm. anyway. Right. And then, and, yeah. then, and, and then your daddy's girl, right. You're the only yeah. child and you're a girl. Yeah. Um, so I, I wonder if, you know, two things there, right. Number one, right. You are to the point you're, you know, you can, you're not always warm and fuzzy. And, yeah. <laughs> and two, right. You know, you were, when you started, you were naive, right. You didn't know what you didn't know and, yes. you, and you went out and did it. You know, um, yeah. was there something about, about, you know, being naive or having your back up against the wall that, that really, you know, was that a driver for you or was that, is there something magical about that for you? Um, I think a little bit of both. I mean, I think, you know, being naive is good. I'd look, you know, we just, there's a brand new agent in our office. He's only 22 and, you know, I just see it in him too, like just that little driving force and you, know, you can just kind of tell when people have it. Um, and you know, I, I don't know. I think I've always been somebody, like I said, that's competitive. Um, I like to win. I like to, um, I like to have my own schedule. I mean, so all these things are driving factors of, you know, I need to make this work and yeah. and this is what I want to do. Um, so yeah. Gotcha. And, and, and you, I uh, just in, real quick, you know, we had, uh, um, speaking of KW, right. You're Keller Williams. We had a uh, Wendy mm-hmm. pop. We had both Jay and Wendy pops on, on the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Wendy, she had an interesting story. Um, you know, she didn't, she, she did 20 million her first year part-time because mm-hmm. she tapped into, 
uh, Jay's network. Um, right. Is is there is there a way that there is there any synergy between you and your husband, him being a real estate attorney? Well, when we got pregnant um, with our first child, well, I decided my husband we made the decision um, to sell his law office. So he runs our team now. Oh. Um, yeah. It. So, okay. yep. He, he is involved in the day to day. And so basically, cause you know, I was at a point I got pregnant. And like I said before, the only thing I wanted in life was to be a mom. And I was really struggling with, you know, am I going to continue working? What am I going to do? I've created this great business. Do I want to give it up? And, you know, there were days that I did. And, yeah. um, and so I needed, basically that's kind of how the team, you know, evolved into, and I just, I had buyer's agents prior to that, but, um, the team involved, it evolved into what it is today. Um, we decided to kind of bring Wyatt on as the CEO of the company and run the, the day to day. So I could, you know, if I needed to stay home with the kids one day, I could, and the team could still run. So, you know, one of the things, right, if you ask agents out there and you say, hey, what's the what's the toughest thing about being an agent? And they'll say, well, I can't get leads. And then when they, you know, maybe they'll find some way to get the leads. And then they're like, I can't manage the leads. So you are good at time management. Right, Stephanie? So yeah. how I mean, let's talk about that. You know, why, where do people struggle with time management and why is that an issue for for most mm-hmm. agents? Well, I think it's, you know, just lack of focus. Um, I mean, I look at, <laughs> I'm throwing my husband under the bus on this phone call, but you know, he is, he is just all over the place. I mean, he will focus on like, got to do this, got to do that, got to do this. And, you know, for me, it's just breaking it down, it's, you know, and we've learned like, and I even get that way sometimes too, you know, everybody does. I'm like, Oh, and then that's when you get stressed. And then it's like, all right, you need to look back and say, all right, well, what's the one, the absolute one thing that I need to do? And it, you know, that goes back to Jay and, you know, Jay's, of course, the co-founder, co-author of The One Thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, basically there, what is the one thing that I need to do that will make the next thing I need to do easier? You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, just focusing on that, I mean, our team is really big on lead generation first thing in the morning. So we do all of our lead generation first thing, and then we go on our appointments. Um, so I'm, I'm wearing a ton of hats right now trying to grow our market center plus still be involved with some of our new home developments. And so I've, you know, had to just write down everything I need to get done and then prioritize them. So, so going back to that one thing, right? So there's, so, Mm -hmm. I mean, unpack that a little bit, right? So I, there's one thing that you have for the day, you know, is there one thing that you have for the week, one thing that you have for the month? Like, like how do you like daily? Yeah, daily. Okay. So get I mean, daily. Yeah. So I mean, give us an example of that. I mean, let's kind of like get mechanical on this, if we could. Yeah. Well, I mean, we. I. I. I keep everything, of course, on a Google Calendar. So I set all my my appointments on a calendar. But I mean, I'm still kind of old school. Any kind of um, tasks or anything, I just keep on a on a running list. And, you know, at the beginning of the day, I just kind of look at it and say, okay, what's my number one? What do I need to, out of the, out of all of these things on here, what's the one thing that I need to do to, you know, get right. crossed off the list? Um, so, and I think, you know, the main thing is when you're doing something, you're just 100% focused. Um, and that, and to know that there's always going to be something that you're going to have to do. So you do have to shut it off or you'll go insane. I mean, when I, you know, I'm still at the end of the day, I still have 10 things on my list, but they don't need to get done today. They can get done tomorrow. And so when I go home, the list is put away and I'm a hundred percent present with my kids and, you know, we do dinner and family and, and all of that stuff. So to me, that's the most important part is just making sure whatever you're doing, you're hundred percent present in whatever you're doing. So if you're with your kids, you're hundred percent there with your kids. You're not on the phone, on the computer, you know, and you see it all the time. I mean, it's, it's, it's scary, but I think it's like an epidemic with us. You know, it's like these kids see their moms and dads on computers and texting and, and then we yell at them for being on wanting to watch TV, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Um, so it's just, yeah, just, I mean, keeping that 100% focus on whatever you're doing, I think, is the key. Yeah, and look, I think that is so, so critical for for people to understand because, you know, mm-hmm. if you are not, and, I, and I'm I'm kind of bad at it. I'll do something and, I'll, and bang, I'll check my email, and then all of a sudden I'll have my yes. some Facebook <laughs> crap pop up, and I'm like, oh, I got to see who like you know, like messaged me or whatever. Um, yep. And what I found, Stephanie, is I, I, um, I recently read an article. There's a there's a cost 
of switching. There's a time cost of switching. So if you were, let's say you were focused on your thing right now, and then you checked your email, on average, it takes 11 minutes for you to get your mindset back to where you were before you... Absolutely. Yep. So, yeah. so in terms of in terms of the one thing, I'm going to say on this just for a few more minutes, you know, the one thing and... Um, uh, one thing that people have a, a a devil of a time with is, you know, they, you know, there are certain things that you need to get done. You're one thing. And then, you know, things that are less important. People think they have to do it all. Right. You right. have built a team. So you you are you, you have figured out that, hey, I can outsource that. Yep. Yep. And I think what it comes down to is people don't care about working with you. They care about the service you provide. Right. So. Um, you know, as long as my agents and everybody on my team is trained to give the utmost service and follow our, you know, when you build a team, make sure you have your values and your mission and, and everything written out. So people that you bring on have the same, the same thing. And, you know, so, I mean, it has been very rare that I've ever gotten a complaint from a client about one of my agents. Um, so, you know, we just are very careful on who we bring over and we just want to make sure that whatever service you know, I was providing years ago to them, they are getting the same kind of service. I mean, even today I had a lady that called me directly on my um, cell phone, which doesn't happen much because we, you know, we use different phone numbers and everything. Um, but she just, you know, had remembered me from the Hampstead area and she's looking to buy. And, you know, I just couched it where we've got awesome buyer's agents now and she's so excited to start working with them. So, um, like I said, it's just about the service, not, not, be one person right so so you want to provide great service you go out and you find people to bring on your team that are that are service first and i think mm -hmm. really what i'm what you were talking about and what i'm talking about is you're building a culture right your your corporate culture is of delivering great service yes yes how, we definitely strive for that yeah i mean so how how do you bake that into your corporate culture i mean what what is it just the people or is how, how you know is there something just about the way you're building it, that, that even if somebody, w go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, we, we definitely have our, we have like a, um, a team, you know, mission statement and core values and, you know, believe in honesty and, and, you know, very, actually very similar. It's funny when we, um, we created our, our mission statement and team stuff before we, we became involved with Keller Williams. And then it was funny when we started becoming aware of Keller Williams and their, their values and stuff, ours aligned a lot with the same values that they had. So it was an easy transition for us. Um, and just made us feel a little better, but, um, so anybody we bring on, you know, we put them through a very, um, rigorous hiring process and, um, we go pretty deep with them. We find out what their big why is in life and why they're doing this and we get to know them and, um, you know, so we just know that we know how each person on the team ticks, what makes them, what gets them motivated. Um, we do incentives, you know, on our team. Um, <laughs> there's an agent on our team, and this is kind of like a, a running, it's a little bit of a running joke, but it's like he's dead serious. So he has this goal of getting this like old school Mercedes. And we told him, we said, all right, if you get 10 deals this month, you know, we will split this Mercedes with you. And he's like, are you serious? All right. I mean, and he has made it his goal last month. He had nine and just missed it. Oh. And I mean, he's, st I know. And everybody's like, you need to give it to him. I like, can't give it to him. No, so, yeah. but he is still on this, um, this mission to, I mean, it's on his vision board and everything. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we just, I don't know. We, we just create, it's fun. We have an awesome time. I mean, everybody around us, it's fun, but you know, we, we're in an open environment too. So we hear everybody on the phones yeah. um, and we encourage each other. And, you know, if they hang up and they make a mistake, you know, we'll say, Hey, you know, maybe you could have said this or maybe you could have said that. And sometimes we just laugh and, you know, so it just, it creates this neat, this neat, like you said, this neat culture. How funny! That sounds fun. Um, yeah. Be honest with me. When so when that guy got to nine, were you a little bit relieved that he didn't hit ten? No, I was <laughs> upset. I was so mad. Trust me, because I've been blasting this on Facebook. I'm like, okay, Facebook world, like you need to make sure that Jonathan gets his his ten deals, and you know, and everybody's like, go, oh, you gotta do it, you gotta do it. No, I was, I was honestly, I was like, because I, I wanted to buy him that Mercedes. <laughs> Because I wanted to show like everybody how awesome he's doing over here. So. Yeah, is it one of those old? 
Is it one of the old like, 500 SL500 convertible ones? I don't even know. I, I don't know cars, but I've seen the pictures, right? I'm looking at it right now. I don't even know. But it's, you know, old school convertible. I'm like, hey, I will drive that thing around too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, slap some st- Team Gas Barovic uh, stickers on it. Hey, <laughs> there um, you go. So, so um, going back to the team, so you're and yeah. Legion. So the first thing in the morning, everybody does their, you know, gut goes and what do they do? When, when you say lead generation that the team does, what mm-hmm. what do they do? What you know? Because they have a different focus than you. Um, yes. Yeah. So what 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 do they do in the morning? Um, they are following up on you know any leads maybe from overnight. Um, we have several different lead sources. Okay. So um, we have a strong SEO website that we've had for years that gets probably our um, our warmest leads. So we have somebody following up on that, and then we have a couple of different um, of course you know lead. Um, generation websites that we that we do pay for online leads um and then you know it's um we have a newer agent that we said go back through our old database and help clean it, it up and in the meantime you know she's setting appointments with appointments with old old deals and old clients um so it's just you know constantly feeding our database looking at people in it calling them checking on them um and then you know we're setting the appointments for the afternoon times Got okay, and then so and the other lead generation sites that that you pay for, what 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 does that look like? Um, what do you mean? The, I mean, is that I mean, are, are they home valuation sites or? Um, right now we don't have. You know what? My husband handles the majority of that. Um, I think we are using um, Commissions Inc. right now, and we may still be using Tiger. Um, mm. I don't know if we have a, a home value site at this time. Honestly, he, he handles, I let him do that side of um, the business. Um, and we did at one time have an inside sales agent, um, and we are probably going to rehire um, rehire one. It just, you know, makes that, that easier to do so our agents aren't constantly um, having to do a lot of follow-up, you know. So just, we want our agents out there selling houses. Right. Um, but, you know, in the meantime, they are definitely prospecting, calling, um, some of them even go and knock on doors and. Huh. Well, so, yep. so, so some of them knock on doors. That's uh, in terms of, you know, building a farm, that you, you, that's not something you guys encourage or you don't believe in it. Yeah, no, we encourage it. Um, we, I will be honest, one of our faults is, um, we have a huge database that we definitely need to tap into. We could have a much larger percentage of referral business than we do now. And one of the reasons is, um, you know, with the switch and coming over to Kelly Williams and stuff, it's been, um, we had a huge database before. And so we're just now starting to get everybody on, um, the right campaigns and, and, it's just one area of our business that we were always chasing the next lead, which, you know, we shouldn't have been. Um, so that's one area that really is probably our number one thing that we need to focus on this year um, is getting our database on a running system where it just, it just flows, you know, everybody's entered to an action plan and, and um, gets our, you know, whether it be a 12 by 12, you know, the eight by eight, 33 touch, all of that. Yeah. And how, so how did you go out and, uh, and how did you, I mean, look, I'm going to your website right now. Um, <laughs> um, how did you get that big database? Oh gosh. I mean, just over time, I mean, you know, lead sources coming in just and then every lead source that comes in, just putting them in our database. Um, and you know, I, it's funny because years ago I did, everything when I was, you know, when it was just me, I was doing everything that I should still be doing now. Um, but you know, everybody was put on a campaign where they would receive emails about, you know, what's been listed, what's been sold. Um, so it's just constantly being, you know, constantly touching them. Um, so they, you know, even if they're not buying or selling right now, you know, in six months, they'll still be getting their stuff. And when they are ready, you know, they'll, they'll come to us. Got it. Um, and I'm on your site. Uh, and by the way, I like it. I, I like uh, yeah, I like this. Uh, what's on Wilmington.com. Um, yeah. uh, can we talk about? I want to talk about. Oh, we, we don't have to. Cause, uh, so your home sold guarantee, or I'll buy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do do a guaranteed sale program. We will. Um, we do have a guaranteed sold, or I'll buy it, or um, guaranteed sold. We have uh, two billboards up right now that's guaranteed sell, or um, I'll sell it for free. 
that has seemed to work a little bit better in our market, then I will buy it. Um, but we do have that program as well where basically we do have investors lined up that um, if somebody is, you know, that does need to sell. Um, and, you know, of course we have certain criteria um, that we will provide, you know, somebody that will buy their house. Got it. Um, mm-hmm. Now, um, look, I, I – I don't want to put you on the spot here at all with this, and we can jump off this topic at any time. But, <laughs> but so somebody came to me and that does this, and um, you know, brought me kind of on the inside. And the way he explained it to me was that it was kind of like, like, um, kind of like a bait and switch. Now, I'm not saying that you do that at all, but but this mm-hmm. guy kind of does it. And what so he says, "Hey, I'll buy your house if I can't sell it." And then mm-hmm. when he gets there, he says, "Hey, uh, look." two things one um for me to to take this on i need uh you know i need not six percent but i need ten percent commission right. and then two i need to uh price it you know 30 grand below or whatever right i need to i need right. to price it under market and then but he's like hey hey but look if you don't want to do that um don't worry about it uh you know i'll i'll sell your house let's just do it at six percent and do it regular yeah yeah, I mean, it's not, I don't, I guess I don't, I definitely don't consider it a bait and switch, but it, um, it is a program that's there to help people um, as far as if they, you know, there are definitely some circumstances where people just have to sell. Got it. And, you know, we have to make it, you know, we're not going to, nobody's going to buy somebody else's house that's also going to be a loss to them. Yeah. You know, so you have to make it um, something that is attractable to, to, each person. Yeah. So, you know, it's a win. We make sure it's a win-win for both parties. Got it. Um, but yeah. And as far as, like I said, the, the, the one that's, you know, or I buy it is more of one that, um, we see a lot less, but you know, we do get a lot, a ton of inquiries actually on guaranteed sale or I'll sell it for free. Um, and you know, we do have criteria on that. We make them, um, get an appraisal. We make them professionally stage it. Um, mm. we make them get a home inspection and all of that, you know, is taken into consideration because, you know, you're, I mean, when you're selling, you think about it, when you go to sell your car, you get a detailed, when you go to sell your house, why aren't you doing the same thing? Right. So, so we, um, we make sure that that is taken care of and, um, you know, we come to an agreement on a price and then, um, yeah. And then it's put through the program. I mean, it, if your house, especially in our market right now, if your house is not priced right, um, then you know you're not going to get showings, but if it's priced right, it's staged, it it everything is in good working order. You don't have any repair issues. It's going to sell. Yeah. So I mean, I have no problem putting my my foot out there and saying, hey, we will sell this for free if it doesn't sell. I have that much confidence in it. You know what yeah, we do. I agree. I love it. And and you know, I mean, everybody's kind of heard the I'll buy it spiel. I've never heard, and maybe this is just me, but I've never heard. You know, I get, I'll sell it for free. I mean. Uh, yeah. I think that is a great tactic. Is anybody else yeah. using? Are, are you the market leader in your area, Stephanie? Uh, I'm sorry. Am I what? Are, are you the market leader in your area? Um, I mean, we definitely have some as far as company or broker or uh, any way you want to see it. I mean, I mean, it, it, when, when people are, when <laughs> yeah, people I mean, think, our, I was gonna say when people our numbers think, are. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, when people think real estate, do they think Stephanie? I would hope so. Um, I would say we definitely have some competitors. We are with MLS. I would say we are in the top ten here in our in our area. That's so great. Um, yeah, yeah. So we definitely. I mean, we definitely have people that, of course, you know, like I said, I'm competitive. I would love to be number number one on the list every day. Um, and you know, with Keller Williams too as a, a broker too, we um, we are just in a relaunch period. So. We are steadily climbing the ladder up. But, yes, I would say, in, and especially in Hampstead, in that area, we're definitely market leaders there. Um, Wilmington, we are growing every day. So, um, yeah. I love it, Stephanie. I'm really, really excited for you. I really am. You're 34, oh, thank you. you're 34 years old. You're starting out your family. You have this very successful business. I mean, I just see great things. 20 years from now, when you're 54, you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to be this super wealthy woman, you know, just bejeweled <laughs> with diamonds everywhere, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, so, we'll get other things. I'm not a big diamond girl. Got it. <laughs> My wife is. Uh, and by the way, look, everybody out there, if anybody in the audience is in Wilmington or Hampstead, Go, call Stephanie. I'm sure she's always on the lookout for talent. Um, yes. So, so speaking of talent, right? So, you know, you put people through a rigorous hiring process. You've seen yes. a lot of people. There's here's here's what's amazing to me. 
I meet people that have a ton of talent that cannot hack it. They cannot be successful in selling real estate. Conversely, Mm -hmm. I see people that have zero personality, not extremely smart, but go out and do $60 million in volume a year. Yeah. Why is that? What is it, Stephanie, (laughs) that that separates those two? I don't know. You know, I do think – oh, gosh, I hate to say this, but I do think – um, sometimes it is luck when it comes down to sometimes you see that. Um, but you know, whether it be, you know, somebody that has a, a huge database or a fam- it had been a family business or something like that. But I mean, I, I think it just comes down to somebody's drive, um, and their big why. And, um, you know, I've, I felt the same thing, but then, you know, when you, re- when you really dig down deep to those people that are successful, there is a reason, um, you know, they, they're, they're doing something right. Yeah. And, you know, we all need to um, kind of take our egos aside and, and learn from them. Um, so, you know, anytime, I, I mean, and I still do this. I mean, there's big players in our market area that, you know, do higher volume than us. And, you know, I'm always trying to see, you know, what they're doing, learning from them, because it doesn't matter. You can, you can learn anything from anybody um, and that could take your business to the next level. So we are, we're huge with education and training. And um, like I said, you can even from, you know, the newbies, I mean, they're doing some crazy things that I'm like, that's a good idea. Maybe I should try that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can, you can definitely learn something from everybody. Yeah. And I think it comes right. So Dave Jenks, right. Is another Keller Williams yeah. guy. Um, so he's been on the show. He was actually like, no, like the number one episode we ever released. And Dave, <laughs> Dave stressed, you know, always be learning, right? And that's what you just said, yeah. right? Always be learning. And yeah. and the second thing, right? So if you can always be learning, and the second thing is work. You have to work. Agents, are re- people come into real estate because they want money and they want time freedom. And the problem mm-hmm. is, right, uh, they, they never get the money because they abuse the time freedom. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, you're absolutely right. And, I mean, I will say my, you know, I hate to say it, but, I mean, I think you, you, have, you have to put in that time in the beginning to, to get to the level, um, you, you can't just have it all in at the beginning. I mean, to get where I am, like I said, I've only been doing it 10 years, but you know, in those 10 years, I mean, my first five years, I've, I've almost burned out. I mean, cause I was just working 80 hours a week. I mean, just work, you know, working nonstop. Of course I didn't have kids then. So life was different. So I give my, you know, I bow down to the people that are starting right now with kids and cause once you have kids, your life changes completely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I think I feel that I'm lucky that I started the business when I was so young. So now, you know, we've got it rolling. And, and so when my kids go to school, you know, well, hey, we could even take it to the next level where I'm working five days a week again, you know. Right. Um, so there's lots to come with us. And we've, we're excited about um, different possibilities, different avenues. You know, I, I would love to teach one day, you know, go back to – teaching, maybe, you know, teaching and training real estate, you know, realtors now. So um, that's one thing that, you know, I'm hoping just basically help some other agents, you know, do what we've done and, and, yeah. and share our success with them. So, but Stephanie, look, so you started in 04. That was a, you know, that was a great year. 05 was a mm-hmm. great year. 06, mm-hmm. great year. Um, <laughs> you know, 07, 08, 09, you know, dark years. Um, yeah. How did you get through that? Because you know, you 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 know, I'm you I'm sure just like everybody else, right? You start in 04, you you, you do some deals, and then again, the world melts. You know, when Lehman failed September 08, the world was melting, uh, and yeah. nobody knew even into 09, nobody knew when you know and if we were ever really going to come out of this. How did you mm-hmm. shift and shimmy your business to 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 stay alive and thrive? Um, we definitely. I did not see a hit in my personal business and probably until about 2010. Hmm. Um, and one of the reasons I think was with that was um, we had two major builders that um, one, um, one actually passed away and then one, um, the banks kind of got to them. Um, and so that was a big portion of our business. And I told myself, I will never let that happen again. So we are never going to have all of our eggs in one basket because um, we had a lot of, of inventory with those two guys and, you know, it took up a lot of our time. Um, so, you know, it, it's funny. I look back too, and I'm not sure. I think I just kept on, you know, trucking along. I know a lot of people did drop out of the business in that time, but I think we had done, we had done so many neat and new and exciting things when I had 
you know, in 05, 06, 07, um, you know, I was doing websites. I was doing videos back then when nobody else was. Right. Um, so we had done a lot of new and in- innovative things in those years that I think kept us going. Um, you know, the agents that had been in the business for 10 years prior to that, when, you know, 07, 08 hit, 09, it took a beating on them because they were just doing the old traditional, hey, we'll stick it in MLS and it's going to sell. Right. Um, you know, we were doing professional photography, like I said, um, video walkthroughs, a bunch of stuff that other agents were had were not even knew about. You know, so a lot of the things that we were doing were, um, and I think that kept us alive um, then because people saw that and it took a little bit of extra oomph <laughs> back in back in those days to get something sold. So I think that helped us. Got it. And so, and, and what, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you want to share this, but, you know, in terms of, you know, so you were very innovative. What kind of mm-hmm. innovations are you doing today? Um, today, I mean, we're staying on top of things for sure. Um, like I said, we go to all of our trainings and stuff. I think right now, you know, for us, it's learning um, more about leveraging our business. So we're, hmm. we're learning a lot about, um, the right people and finding the right people and hiring the right people um, and always be looking for talent. So, you know, I've got right now, actually today I was going through my list of some marketing ideas that I want to, um, want to pursue. And, you know, I'm like, you know what, I think it's time. I mean, we're at that point that I do think we're ready to hire a marketing director and um, because there's so much stuff that just takes up so much time. And, you know, my husband and I are very, we have a lot of, um, create creative ideas and you know, we're not the best implementers, but you know, we can delegate it. So, um, just finding the right person to do that kind of stuff, I think will, will help. So we're looking at a lot of, you know, some marketing creative ideas with that. Um, and I always, you know, I, I keep a I have on a competition. If I see something that people are intrigued by, or, you know, you hear people talk about like, have you seen what they're doing or have you, you know, I'm looking it up and I'm researching it and I'm trying to, kind of one up them. <laughs> <laughs> How funny. Well, look, so a minute ago you said that, you know, when you when you started you were working like 80-hour weeks, right? Which is mm-hmm. and you and you and you started to feel burnout. And this business, yeah. right? Real estate is just it's a business of rejection, right? All you hear is no. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Was there ever a time for you that that you know, you just you got, you know, you just got rejected, you got down and out and you just said, "Man, I cannot do this again today." Right? Like was there a time that you just wanted to quit and how did you Oh yeah. Yeah, how did you push through that roadblock and, and go out and find success? Um I'm a believe it or not, I'm an introvert. I am um what? I don't know like I don't Yes, I know. It. Yes, it's true. Um you you know, take the the disc personality test and I'm a super low I. Um I'm a super high C. I'm very cautious. Um so for me, my re- you know, if I if I'm burnt and I can't do it anymore, I honestly I go home and um I'm you know well then now that I have kids it's a little bit different but I mean before I would just go home and I would just take like a quick like twenty thirty minute nap that's my recharge like to be by myself process think about things um have no other interruptions and and just kind of go in my own little world and just you know, whether I exercise or just do something to, to by myself to make me process, you know, what, what just happened, um, you know, and then I figure it out and just kind of go back at it. Um, but yeah, there's definitely days. And of course I'm a woman, so I'm, you know, right. <laughs> like all over the place right. with emotions all the time. Um, you know, and sometimes I have different, sometimes I'll get mad, sometimes I'll get upset, you know, but, um, I just keep going at it. You know, I don't know. I mean, I've definitely, definitely felt burnt at times, but, um, I think it just comes down to what I want to do anything else now. Um, and so kind of shut up and keep going, you know, <laughs> <Keep trucking. laughs> I got to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, and so, and, and what about, you know, in terms of, you know, I mean, you're young, you are, um, you are at the tail end of, of, uh, yeah, you keep saying I'm 34 and I think I don't, I gotta think about this. I think, I forget already, but I think I'm turning 34 this year. This might be tr- – yeah, because I can't be turning 35. My birthday's in like two weeks, so, so I think I'm turning 34. Got so I'm 33. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're even younger. Well, no, look, and I because you said, and here's why I'm saying it because you, and so sorry that I'm saying that you're older yeah, than you are. I'm totally kidding. But I'm totally kidding. Got it. You just, <laughs> you, I can't even remember. Yeah. Well, you said, you know, you started in 04 and you were 24. So I was like, okay, I don't know. Yeah, 34. Um, so, but again, so the reason why I'm bringing your age up is, uh, at least now, is because, you know, you are a millennial. 
And, uh, you know, millennials are getting, uh, you know, p- p- millennials have gotten a bad rap, but, you know, NAR just came out with, uh, with a study and millennials represent the, the largest portion of, of people buying homes today. They're actually 31%. Gen X is 33 or 30 and boomers were the other 30. So, you know, let's quickly talk about social media. What do you, how do you utilize social for you and your business? I am a big Facebook girl. Um, I will say that's probably, um, I use Facebook for business and and personal and, um, the other tool, um, I use Pinterest, but I, I really don't use it um, for business yet. So that's one thing we're looking at. Um, I'm more of a, a Pinterest is kind of my personal escape. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'll use that for home projects and the kids stuff. Um, but Facebook, I will say, um, we get a ton of referrals, um, for us, even agent referrals looking to make a career change or, um, you know, get involved in real estate. Um, and, um, you know, business, I'm, I feel like Facebook for me, I'm a very good connector. Um, I always, you know, check Facebook quite often throughout the day and, you know, there's tons of requests and, Hey, I need a, a landscaper or I need, you know, people put all kinds of stuff on Facebook these days. So I like to um, help other people out by giving them that information. And, you know, in turn, it, it, it helps you and, you know, gives you some credibility. Yeah. Um, we yeah. use Facebook a lot to promote our stats. Um, we use Facebook a lot to, you know, promote new subdivisions, new communities. And um, we haven't done a lot of sponsored and promoted ads. We've done a couple, but that's something that, I mean, I do, I think, I remember at my prior company, our, our owner, you know, was kind of getting on us about using Facebook, and I was thinking to myself, nope, there is no way, this is definitely the new thing, like, people are, are going to be using Facebook for business, and sure enough, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty wild, I mean, I get referrals a lot through Facebook. Amazing. Yeah, you should definitely start to play with uh, Facebook ads. I, I, you know, I, I'm actually putting mm-hmm. together a course on that. I've, 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 been, I've been doing that uh, in terms of promoting the show, and it's, uh, they're cheap, yeah. and, uh, and they work. Because literally, you can say, you know, you can, if you know how to use the power editor, you can literally target, uh, you know, uh, younger women who are pregnant or trying to get pregnant. I mean, I mean you, can, yes. you, can, you can get so laser-focused. Um, and I also see, I also see here that your favorite shows are Grey's Anatomy, The Bachelor, and The Bachelorette. <laughs> <laughs> those, those, shh, don't tell. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. All <laughs> yeah, right. those are my those are my escapes. My husband gets on me for watching those shows. I'm like, you know what? Sometimes I just need to veg out and and live in fantasy world for a little bit. <laughs> for sure, I, I totally. <laughs> who, agree. who wouldn't want to go out on a date with Juan Pablo, right? I don't know who is that. Who's who's Juan Pablo? Uh, he he was the last bachelor, but I heard he's, oh. he's kind of a jerk now. So, right. well, fame will do that to you. All right, hey, so let's <laughs> let's start to wrap it up here. Um, so okay. I ask I ask three last questions, and the first one is this: okay. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go mm-hmm. buy right now? Oh gosh, the MREA. Definitely. Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Millionaire Real Estate Agent. I, I totally agree. And look, if everybody, if you want a free copy, uh, just use our mm-hmm. Audible trial. It's it's uh, Go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive and get a free copy. Um, Perfect. Now, you are 30, 33. Uh, you're very internet-y. Do you have an yeah. internet tool that you're in love with? You know, kind of like an Evernote that you can share with the audience? Oh, an internet tool that I'm in love with. Um, oh, Man, I don't know. I mean, I think you know my internet stuff. I'm, I'm, I have, you know, Facebook for me is my my biggest thing that I use internet wise. And as far as tools, um, gosh, you put me on the spot. Sorry. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Well, let me let me ask um, you. So, if you look on your phone, do you have any like real estate apps that you use? I have my KW app. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Yeah, no, no, I, I really don't. Um, let's see. If I look at my phone, I um. Most of mine are filled with um, kid games. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, no. Okay. I, no, yeah. that's all right. That's okay. Look, I, I gotta, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I will tell you this. Here's, I will tell you, this is an interesting thing that I, by asking that question, as, as people move up in success, right, from $20 million to $60 million to $90 million, the farther you move up that ladder, the more that people don't have an internet tool. They're, they, they, they're phone, face, and paper. That's what they do. It's like yeah. belly to belly. That's what they do. So, uh, so look, yeah. I mean, you not having a tool just shows that that's, that's where you're at or that's where you're going. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hey, 
So my last one is this. What about a personal habit? Do you have any personal habits that, that you feel have contributed to your success? Um, I, I do think, you know, talking about when we kind of went back to balance, um, everybody has their own recharge and I think you need to find that recharge, whether it's, um, you know, for my husband, it's being active and being social. For me, it's going, taking a nap and reading a book, um, because we all get completely stressed and burned and, and everything. And you need to find what gives you that, that recharge, um, so for me, I know when I'm hitting that point and I mean, I'll tell my husband or if I need my mom to come take the kids for an hour or something, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm about to break down. I need somebody to give me an hour to myself. Um, so it's, it's, you know, asking for that help and um, not being superwoman and not doing it all on your own because yeah. we, we can't do it all. We really can't. Um but yeah, I mean, and I do try to exercise in the morning if I can, and that always makes me feel better during the day. I mean, I I definitely have more energy when I do, even if I just get 10 minutes of a quick walk or run, you know, I, I feel better throughout the day. Oh, and this is my number one personal habit, one massage a month. Got to have my massage. Got it. Okay, I love it. Got it. <laughs> and look, you know what? You know what I love about that is, you know, when, when people start to feel burned out, right, a lot of people, instead of taking that time for themselves, they go and they double down and just go, <clears throat> they just try to charge through it. And then they end up, you know, they're working longer hours or getting more burnt out. And you know what? You are not yeah. productive when you, you know, when you're, yeah. you know, so I love yeah. that notion. Stephanie, yes. thank you. Thank you for coming thank on you. the show, man. I had a great yeah. time with you. Um, and look, let, and by the way, again, I'll say it again. Anybody out there that you you think that, uh, you know, you have some talent and you're in Wilmington or Hampstead, reach out to Stephanie. Stephanie, where can people find you? Um, they can, our website is stephaniegasperovic.com. I know, horrible last name. I, my maiden name was Brooks, so go figure. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> stephaniegasperovic.com. Of course, you can also Google Keller Williams Wilmington and find me there. Um, and, um, I'm, you know, the website's probably the easiest way to get all of our contact information. So. Got it. And, and look, for everybody, if you can't spell Gasperovic, it's just go to the show notes, go to superagentslive.com. And uh, and I will have Stephanie's picture there and it, everything that we just talked about will be on the show notes. And the other thing, too, is even if you're not in Wellington and if you've enjoyed this episode with Stephanie, reach out to Stephanie and say thank you. Because, you know, look, she's a mom. She's got this thriving business, but she took time out of her day to come and talk to me and talk to you guys. So, you know, send her a message and say thanks. And Stephanie, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, let's stay in touch. Thank you so much. I appreciate the, the, the phone call. All right. Great. See, see you, Steph. Okay. Bye-bye. Let's go.